This week for Touch Base in Seoul, we have an artist who goes by two names. The first is a Korean-American new media artist, Mina Chun, best known for her political pop art known as Polypop. The other is her alter ego, Kim Il-sun, a North Korean social realist painter. Now, through these two identities, she explores themes of the divided Korea, unification and peace. And her work is currently being shown at the Korea Society Museum in New York. To tell us more about that exhibition and her work, she joins us now over video from New York. Ms. Chan, hello and welcome to the show. Hi. Thank so, you for having me. Yes, thank you for connecting with us. And now, while we were doing research on you, we came across the term global art activist in a memo about you. What do you think of that description? And is that how you would define yourself? I think it's an appropriate way of describing my activities that are in alignment to a lot of the artists who are working for the purpose of social justice work. I think there's been a lot of change in the role of the artist over the last couple of decades. And um, the pursuit of what an artist can do as well as the meaning of the artist in society. Hmm. I think, yeah, I mean, generally art used to be creative for the sake of art. It was aloof from society to uh, many respects, but there's been times when art and society work together and more and more these days, there's a lot of not only um, art activism, but just activism in general in order to um, bring the awareness of certain things within society that are um, impinging on, you know, development, mm. a better tomorrow. And I think artists play a larger role today being a strong community member and a collaborator. And um, yeah, I think it describes my work well, especially because I try to consider the schism within North and South Korea and the issues of our divided country and the trauma that we deal with as Koreans can be echoed around the world and to advocate for a global peace has been um, something that I've been very invested in. Could you tell us a little bit about how you got to where you are? Uh, how did you become an artist and specifically uh, a new media artist? What was the appeal for this type of work? Oh, okay. Thank you for your question. I think I was always an artist. I can't remember ever doing anything else. Um, I was surrounded also with a lot of artists around me. My mother's an art historian. My father was a cultural attache for the Korean embassy. So this track was very natural. I started in painting. And once I started learning digital arts and did my second master's in imaging and digital arts, one of the things that you learn, it's like, Considered with technology, it's like a part of an extended stem. Mm. So it's known as STEAM with the A in it. And uh, you learn research, collaboration, and a very important component of uh, theory, theory that gets applied to actual art application. So with that kind of a background, I continued to study and research and also do a PhD in philosophy and media and communication. And one of the most important professional societies that I've been affiliated with is the New Media Caucus of the College Art Association. And we're a group of about over a thousand artists, academics, new media artists around the world. And we kind of make similar type of work. It's always um, critically engaged, it's using technology, but never just for the sake of technology. Um, we use technology to talk about things within a culture and society. And I think for me in particular, what's been very important is the use of media and special communication. Uh, my work especially has been important to communicate with uh, people of press, reporters, mm. uh, people like you, 
um, it's really important that the message of my work gets out. And I believe that we're strong collaborators, that I, I've gained a lot of support and help through media and press in order to extend uh, my work further and uh, beyond reach so that it goes beyond the gallery walls, basically. Right. You are best known, perhaps, uh, for creating what you've called a polypop or political pop art. Can you explain for us a bit more what polypop is? And also, uh, through that, I understand you've worked for a very long time to put a spotlight on the North Korea issue, the divided Korea issue. Can you tell us more about that as well? Sure. Um, I'm trying to think. I think... Polypop, I had a big solo exhibition at the Sungkuk Art Museum. It was, the title of the exhibition was Polypop. All the work was a response to the political time, the not only global politics and popular culture and media, um, but it was using pop art. So political pop art, although art historically, it's reference to Chinese contemporary or Chinese avant-garde artist work, where there was a collapse of communism with the opening of capitalism and expansion of their market. Um, the work that was coming out of the contemporary artists from China were distinct. They were known as political pop art. Polypop was a term that I've been using to just make it a little more accessible. I use pop art as a language, artistic language to make the work visually appealing very accessible in the surface level, and then to provide um, many layers of meaning behind uh, the aesthetic of pop art. And it includes socialist, social realism is probably more accurate. Mm -hmm. And one of the uh, main subjects that I've tackled on, because I, I, you know, I look at contested geopolitical spaces. So Tokto, for example, was a very important topic of mine or a site, you know, that arouses uh, different nationalism and, um, you know, um, patriotism and also just angst amongst, you know, Japan and Korea. And, and, and um, similarly, like the DMZ is also a hot zone that is very controversial and exposes a lot about um, all the investments that go around you know, and as well as the hype by people, public and news and media. So I take these uh, sites and try to include more awareness with the work that I, I produce. Obviously, uh, being Korean, and I call myself a global Korean because I'm not just Korean American or Korean Korean. I'm a Korean Korean living in America and, and also working in Korea when I can. Mm and teaching in Korea. So I'm definitely part of the Korean diaspora and I feel like being global Korean, that perspective I have of different cultural comparatives is um, more genuine. And because I'm a Korean artist, my favorite subject is Korea, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Right. And I think, you know, yeah, you, you become, you know, in love with your own country when you're uh, so, removed away from your own land. Um, and I think your question was about North and South Korea. Sure, about your work. Maybe we yeah. should go on to your alter ego, Kim Il-sun, who is a North Korean artist. It's a, should we say, a character that you've created? Can you explain for our listeners uh, about this alter ego? Who is Kim Il-sun and how did she come about? So... I am a new media South Korean working in the United States artist, Mina Chan. My Korean name is Chan Min Jung. Mm. So if you need to look me up in, in Korea, you go, you know, you have to do the Chan Min Jung. Um, at a certain point, because my mother came from the North, this is, you know, quite common to a lot of uh, Koreans having parents from the North or relatives or extended family. And my father was from the Northern regions, but it was still one country mm. before the division. And I think it's her kind of story. It's the family extended stories that I've always kind of um, held as my own personal lineage and, 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 my ex and an extended story. 
Well, when you're in the United States and you have, you know, Korean American children, you know, the identity becomes really big. And um, at some point I started really uh, making a lot of work about North Korea. I visited Kum Gang San in 2004 mm. and felt very, um, you know, close to North Koreans who I got to meet there. And of course, you know, there there are extended blood relatives. What can what can I say? Mm. But um, eventually, uh, the kind of work that I was making um, allowed me to extend a an artistic persona, an art persona, an alter ego. And this is very common, you know, so many different people with different projects have a different new name attached to it. You've seen Beyonce, you know, become like Sasha at some point when she's unleashing a different part of herself. But as a Korean artist practicing art, advocating for the Koreas, it only made sense that I practiced simultaneously as a South Korean and North Korean. And so Kim Il-sun is my alter ego. She's had over a decade of an art career. She's made appearance in New York. You know, she's an international figure, mm. you know, at the uh, art fair, you know, in New York, or she appears in your dreams. She is the mother of unification. She is um, everywhere and nowhere. And also she teaches art history lessons to North Koreans through video art history, mm. um, video artworks that I create. So there's a, this is a sort of my attempt to communicate uh, with current North Koreans. You know, sometimes I have the opportunity to communicate directly through radio, like Voice of America, Korean broadcast to North Korea as well. So I get to do interviews and, and really try and talk to them. That's, mm. you know, one direction. Sometimes I get to um, send uh, information or help send information into North Korea when it's more permissible. I, I you know, people know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, people have done this. You know, Chokobai has been flying over the DMZ for a long time, and right. um, so I, I, so I've been making artwork. I don't know if you got to see my one hundred thousand chokopai for the audience to eat, and right. President Moon Jae-in is a and very his popular wife. snack yeah. here in South Korea, but also has become a symbol of. Uh, um, uh, the the connection that North Korean people have as well, because uh, Korean people, when they give North Koreans they meet this present, they uh, it becomes a, a valuable commodity almost. Yes, of course. And I think it was when they were mm. one of the first times that they had this exchange was the Kezong joint uh, labor force and South Koreans, you know, couldn't give any money because that mm. would be considered bribery. So as token of thanks, they gave Chukopai and that hit the black market, became a, you know, uh, sensational um black market item overnight the number one smuggled good and was worth you know three bowls of rice and it hmm. sought after you know uh immediately and you know i was able to get uh the sponsorship from orion early on like 2014 when a lot of the choco pie was already starting to um you know be this kind of first carrier of communication and exchange between the koreas sure and by eating choco pie, like in a gallery in New York, Ethan Cohen Gallery, um, Americans started understanding that there's another story about the love and exchanges of Korea, the Koreas. You know, whereas we're coming from in, a, in the United States after 9-11 and the, all the propaganda towards war and terror, you know, North Korea became an axis of evil. And, you know, how strange and bizarre it is to be a Korean and have your, you know, Koreans be considered an axis of evil at that kind of state when we know that, you know, the Korean War also was in right. part a relic of the Cold War. Mm. So, you know, it's these like larger power, um, you know, a world, you know, playing pawns with us or uh, puppets, you know, we, we are puppets sure. to the larger yeah, the global stage of politics. And um, so I do these kind of activist work. You know, I I, I have a choco pie for mm. the audience to eat as a form of healing, 
right? Because the choco pie is a what you know the the delicious choco pie allows us to feel good, but it's also uh, you know food for um, take a bite for global peace. Uh, the gesture of eating together, participating, where the art changes shape over time because everybody participates in the performance. So in yeah, 2018 at the Busan um, Biannual, I, I did have the honor where President Moon Jae-in and, and First Lady Kim Jong uh, came and they ate choco pie and then the next day they jetted off to Pyongyang wow. for their you know historic visit. Mm. And re recently, the, uh, a podcast in the United States was trying to talk about bringing out the visibility of Asian artists. Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh, my gosh, that wh what a way to smuggle choco pie <laughs> through their stomach. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, those sorts of labels, such as Axis of Evil, I guess it dehumanizes uh, the people that live yeah. in uh, North Korea and sometimes forget that. And through your work, through that exhibition where you actually physically eat chocopai, I guess that connects them to what uh, North Koreans might be feeling as they take a bite out of chocopai, mm -hmm. uh, something that is yeah. rare for them. Whereas here in South Korea, in the West, we take it for granted almost. And that kind of shows uh, what they're going through as well. Now, currently in the headquarters of the Korea Society in New York, a non-profit organization uh, in the U.S. and New York, you have an exhibition on view there called Dreaming Unification Slash Protest Peace. The title itself is quite interesting. Can you tell us more about this exhibition and what you want people to take away from it? The exhibition is my art persona, Kim il -sun, painting in deep dreams. So she is dreaming for unification and the type of painting that is coming out of this deep dream, dreaming process are Korean unification flags. You've seen them during the Pyeongchang Olympics when uh, North and South Korean, you know, athletes use the flags to promote one Korea. Um, but even before then, you know, I knew of the flag because when I visited um, North Korea in 2004, North Korean acrobats would use the flags to promote love and one Korea to South Korean tourists. And so that image of the flag always was with me. And Kim Il Sun has been dreaming about the flag and has been painting this unification flag, the Korean unification flag, even before the Pyeongchang Olympics. Mm. And so after that time, the series of artworks where it's just continuously, you know, producing these um, paintings, they're in a dark blue, uh, Yves Klein international blue color, which is the most spiritual blue color. It feels like, you know, deep, um, uh, what is the color? It's a dream color of dreaming and, and spirituality, but it's, um, it's the ocean, so the deep sea, so very mm. kind of immersive color. And on top of it, the paint of Korea is done in street art style, protest art style. It's done with stencil, spray. It's got some sumi in order to collapse, you know, east and west mm. kind of art techniques. But it has tagging, you know, because in her dream, she faces the urgency of having to call for unification. And the deeper she goes into her sleep, the more relevant this call for unification and global peace occurs. And you would see that in a series of unification flags, literally the size of figures. And they are hung really high as if it's a procession of figures in a parade. Mm. That's what you see at mm. the... Um, Korea Society, so Dreaming Unification Protest Peace. The show comes from the Ethan Cohen Gallery in New York, where during the height of the pandemic, uh, we had done this exhibition, you know, for nobody, because <laughs> no one could really visit it. <laughs> but yeah it, ex yeah, it existed in social media, and it was at the political height of uh, the presidential election mm. at that time. It was a very important time, and art as the banner of hope, essential in life. Um, we carried on with this exhibition now uh, proudly displayed at the Korea Society. And um, up some of similar 
type of work and that series is also at the Asia Society uh, Triennale at the Asia uh, mm. Society Museum as well in New York. Yeah. Well, this exhibition is on view, as you said, at the Career Society until September 2nd. It's been a pleasure to discuss uh, your work and your thoughts behind it today. We've been speaking to the artist Amina Chan, a.k.a. Kim Il-sun for Touch Base in Seoul. Thank you once again for your time. Thank you. Thank you.